My name is Sebesh Patel, editor at Trade Finance Global and host of the podcast Trade Finance Talks. So my name is Emmanuel Gann. I work at the World Trade Organization in the Economic Research and Statistics Division. And I do a lot of work on digital technologies and in particular blockchain and how blockchain can impact international trade. So there are a number of key findings. Um, I think the first one is that we see that the trade landscape is changing extremely rapidly, that DLT is a catalyst for change and innovation. It can accelerate the digitalization of trade, which is very good news uh, because international trade goods remains very uh, paper intensive. Um, it also shows that it's more an evolution than a revolution. We see that out of the different projects that we cover in the study, more and more are going into production, which is very good, it's good news, but it's still early stages. So delighted to be here at the WTO in Geneva today because we have launched Blockchain and DLT in Trade, a reality check white paper in partnership with the WTO and the ICC. And actually, it looks at a, it takes a huge cross section of all of the projects, consortia, and companies within blockchain and DLT that are looking to change and digitalize trade finance. We've interviewed around 200 banks, fintechs, consortia, consultancies, and vendors within this space to do a qualitative and quantitative survey. And we've also mapped out the 39 different projects within this space. So we launched our periodic table of DLT and blockchain related projects in trade to help people compare some of the different projects and also map out where the minutiae and nuances lie between each project. And actually, as you can see on the left hand side of the periodic table, we have the trade and supply chain financing initiatives, which are further split by the different colors into the individual categories within trade and supply chain finance. We've also mapped out insurance, network of network related projects and supply chain digitization, which address things like the digitization of specific documents within trade and supply chain. It's a really interesting diagram because what we've then done is we've put the underlying technology. So whether these, these projects run on Corda R3 or Quorum or Hyperledger Fabric, and then the most interesting thing we did for the periodic table was we mapped out what we thought was the level of the stage of maturity of these projects. So we looked at whether some of the projects were at the very first conceptual or proof of concept phase, right through to whether they were fully live and well established within, within the trade space. And actually what we found was most projects within the industry were actually at the very early stages of development, which is an exciting time. And, and I think we should be cautiously optimistic about many of the projects in trade and supply chain with regards to DLT and blockchain. Um, the good news is that more and more projects are going into production, but it's still early stages. On average, we find that the different projects that we review in the, uh, in the study um, are uh, on a scale of five at 2.3, uh, meaning between the proof of concept stage and the early stages of production. I think um, what it shows is that, as I said, the trade landscape is changing very rapidly. So it's very important that policymakers keep a close eye on what's happening on the uh, most recent developments um, so that they understand the opportunities that are being opened, but also the challenges that the industry is facing. Um, and I do think that policymakers have a critical role to play at in creating that web of connected ecosystems. But what is very important as well is that uh, we all work together. So there's a need for, co for coordination, coordination between all the different stakeholders involved in international trade, be they from the private sector side or the government, but also coordination, I believe, at an international level uh, to avoid regulatory fragmentation and, and to allow this technology to really have an impact on international trade and have an impact on a global scale.